Look, I'm gonna say it. The days of getting Grand Champ with zero mechanics are behind us. The truth is, Rocket League is changing. And if you wanna keep up, you have to change with it. You guys may know me as the person who's been saying you can get Grand Champ with zero mechanics for the last four or five years. And you're right. When I started on YouTube, one of my first ever videos that blew up was you can rotate to Grand Champ with zero mechanics. And the reason I knew that was true it's because I did it. Four years ago, when I got Grand Champ for the first time, my mechanics were terrible. Like, you guys think I'm bad now? Oh Show them the clips. <laughs> oh, hell no. Here is my new and updated claim. Yes, you can get Grand Champ with zero mechanics, but now you can only get it with zero advanced mechanics. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the five mechanics that you absolutely need. After that, I'll cover the five essential game sense rules. Yes, you heard me right. You need a little bit of mechanics and a little bit of game sense in order to get Grand Champ the fastest. So whether you're stuck in Diamond, Champ, or even just trying to break into Grand Champ, this video will give you the tools and knowledge to stay ahead of the curve in 2024. Five mechanics that are core. Number one, recoveries. I'm putting three mechanics in here because I think this is fair, but hear me out. Number one in the recovery mechanics, half flips. Number two, wave dashes. And number three, speed flips. The reason I'm putting all three recovery mechanics together is because combined, they take about the same time to learn as any of the other mechanics about to come up on this list. But the key with recoveries and the reason they are number one of all five mechanics is because no matter what mechanic you go for on this list, most of the time you're gonna mess up. And after you mess up, you have to recover. They have the highest of what I call the utility to difficulty ratio. Now I know what you're thinking, Luke, how could you put speed flips as an essential mechanic to get GC? Can you technically get GC without speed flips? Of course. The reason speed flips are what I call essential is because if I was coaching you and you came to me and you were champ two and you're losing all your kickoffs and it's obvious that the reason you're not ranking up is because you start every game on defense. Can you get GC without speed flips? Sure but why are we trying to make it harder on ourselves? And wait, before you click on to the next mechanic, I have a test for you to prove if you're ready. So many low rank players I coach think they know how to half flip or think they know how to wave dash, but when it comes down to it in game and there's a ball coming at their net, it's like all of the information just, you know? So here's a pack to test it. This pack is called Diamond Defense. And before the shot comes on net, you're gonna have to recover using a half flip or a wave dash or even a speed flip, I guess, if you know it, to get back and save it. If you don't half flip, you're not gonna make it to the ball in time. Before you move on, make sure you can complete this pack with a passing grade. Same thing goes for speed flips. If you need help with speed flips, you can use the speed flip kickoff test pack. I'll have a code on screen and make sure you can complete it from all three starting spawns. If you can't, I have tutorials on both half flip and speed flip on the screen here. So you can save this video, go learn those, and then come back in a couple days once you learn it. Mechanic number two, shooting, but more specifically, air roll shots. You've probably heard by now that in order to get out of gold or platinum or diamond, you gotta learn how to hit the ball hard. But from my experience coaching players in the last three months, the most underrated shooting skill that I don't know why more people aren't yelling about, air roll shots. You see, the reason air roll shots are so important is because they allow you to score the ball even if you have a bad attacking angle. I see so many low rank players positioning in the wrong spot spot when they're receiving the pass. If you're attacking a ball that's centered from the corner into the corner without air roll shots, you're just going to slam the ball right off the corner. However, if you know air roll shots, that same pass coming off the corner is a shot you can actually put on net. The reason for this is because air rolling allows you to expose the corner of your car, which if you didn't know, is not only the most powerful part of your car, but also gives you access to direction chain. You see, when you just front flip into the ball, you hit it forward. But when you hit it with your corner, you hit it slightly diagonally. So repeat after me, it's like Lightning McQueen. If you wanna shoot left, you air roll to the right. And if you want to shoot right, you air roll to the left. Simple in theory, but harder in platinum. Master air roll shots, and it won't even matter if you have bad positioning, because you'll still score. Or if you've been trying training packs and YouTube videos and just 
nothing sticks, a coach might be able to figure out what's holding you back. This March, I started getting coached again by the pro coach Shock because I was basically hard stuck all of 2023. In just six weeks, my coach Shock did a complete 180 on my improvement. And shortly after, I hit a new peak rank of 1720 MMR, that's GC3 last season, all while playing ranked for less than an hour a day. If that sounds interesting, DM my Discord below with keyword fast, and we can see if coaching might be a good idea for you. Plus, as a bonus, the first five people from this video who sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching with somebody like Shock or anybody else on my team will get a free one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me too. Click the first link in the description below to DM me and learn more, and back to the video. Mechanic number three, dribbling and flicks. The climb from zero to grand champ, in my experience, at the start in bronze to platinum, it's just about hitting the ball hard. The person who wins the game is the one who can actually just hit it. Then platinum moving into champ, we start to get into the ranks of control. I think the former professional player and now pro coach in my coaching program, Freaky, said it best. Once you get to the diamond ranks, the diamond bubble is like ping pong, but with boost. So the person who can control the ball through diamond is going to be the one that controls the game. This is why dribbling and flicks is so important. Finally, when you push to champ and grand champ, things get a little more complicated because you actually have to have a brain and, and do some game sense things, but we'll cover that later. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Luke, yeah, I know how to dribble. I've put the ball on my car in free play and I know how to flick it, but whenever I dribble in game, it doesn't work. If that sounds like you, you may have a problem with your catches. Catches are what you need to do to slow down the ball in game and gain control before you start your dribble. To practice catches, I'm gonna give you a training pack called Dribble Training by Verge. The reason I use this pack when I was grinding up to Grand Champ and I recommend this pack to everybody I coach because once you get through the first like three easy dribble shots, you have to catch the ball first. To get an effective catch, remember, we don't want to put the ball where we start our dribble. We don't wanna catch the ball at the top of our car. Instead, we wanna catch the ball out front. If you've ever played sports, what the coaches would always tell me and that I just couldn't understand, Merch, can you help me with visual effects? Okay, so imagine there's a ball, like you're throwing a ball, woo. You don't wanna catch it like this, because if you catch it like this, it's gonna bounce off your, off your titties and it'll and then it bounces out. Instead, we want to catch the ball out front and absorb it in with our hands. So in Rocket League, it's like, instead of letting it bounce off the top of your car, go you catch it on the front of your car, not on the top. And this is what allows you to absorb the impact. And then we let it roll onto the top of our car and we start our dribble. Does that make sense? Mechanic number four, and wait, before we explain this mechanic, I just, I just have to preface with something. I have bad news. If one thing is true about Rocket League, it is this. You will always have shit teammates. That's the bad news. Good news is I have a solution. And the solution is mechanic number four on this list, backward saves. The truth is you will be left in one-on-ones. In solo queue Rocket League, there is no other way. So you can either one, ignore shadow defense and blame your teammates and stay hard stuck. Or number two, you can get good at shadow defense and win anyway. I recommend number two. The next pack you need to know is why you suck shadow defense. The key to the backwards save pack is where you look. If you look at the ball the first time you do this, like most platinum and champ players, it will look Yikes. But if you look at your car, you'll be able to think, okay, my car is facing this way. Down is still down. Up is still up. The car is just facing my camera. Important. While you do this pack, you have to resist the urge to turn ball cam off. I know when you do this, you're going to want to turn ball cam off because then your car is facing up and everything is easy. But remember, in a game, we're not going to be staring at our goal. We're going to be staring at the opponent. Well, I mean, if you're platinum or diamond, we won't really be staring at the opponent. We'll be staring at the ball. Anyways, ball cam on, good enough. Once you get this pack down, it doesn't matter if your solo queue teammates suck because you will save the day. Finally, mechanic number five, the last core mechanic, fast aerials. Maxing out your first jump, tilting your car back, and using your second jump optimally while boosting the entire aerial. The reason fast aerials are so important is because there comes a time in Rocket League where you can't be patient. You can't just be the dude sitting on the ground watching the game, calculating. You know, you got all like the equations going on the screen. You're like calculating, calculating, and all of a sudden the ball's in your net. 
there comes a point where you actually have to get this, hit the ball. Like you got to jump and hit it. Warning, once you learn how to fast aerial, you got to be careful or else you're going to be the diamond or champ player soaring across the midfield, missing the aerial and then landing in your opponent's net. But <laughs> if used properly, I think fast aerials are essential. You're going to have a really tough time getting GC if you don't have them. Now, those are the core mechanics you need to get GC, but without game sense, none of it really matters. So in this next section, I want to go over five game sense principles, five things you need to know that honestly, you can implement immediately after you watch this and see results in your game. Game sense rule number one, dribbling on an angle. If you've ever felt like my opponents are monkeys, I'm getting early challenged or just for whatever reason, I can't dribble in ranked. Listen up. This is for you. What most low rank players do is when they get the ball and they can go at the opponent's net, they take it and they drive it on their nose straight down the middle of the field. And it doesn't work. The reason this isn't optimal is because when you dribble the ball down the center of the field on top of your car, you actually block your own vision. The ball will get in the way of you seeing your opponent. So if they challenge you, you're just going to get dunked. You can't see it. Not only that, but when you dribble in a straight line and the ball's on the center of your car, the only real option you have for flicking it is like a front flip flick or like a slightly off center diagonal flick. So the direction change you get isn't very good. And then on top of that, if it already wasn't bad enough, if you fail this front flip flick driving straight at the net, where's your car landing? Answer in the opponent's net. Not ideal. Instead, we want to dribble on an angle or in other words, I want you to dribble sideways. Example, when we dribble the ball at the opponent's corner or at one of the posts instead of down the center of the net, because our car is sideways, number one, vision improves. All of a sudden, the ball isn't blocking our vision of the opponent, meaning while we drive, we can watch the opponent and then flick it at the right time. Not only does dribbling on an angle help with your vision, if we're dribbling on an angle, we can now 45 degree flick or speed flip flick or side flip flick, all of which will not only give us height change, but also direction change. This is what makes pro flicks or high level flicks almost impossible to save when done right. Finally, and maybe the best benefit of dribbling sideways is if we mess up our sideways dribble, we mess up the flick, we lose control of the ball. Where is our car after the flick? Because we're dribbling sideways, it's not in the opponent's net, it's kind of recovering out to the side. And because of this, dribbling sideways is also a lower risk way to dribble. So you get better vision, you're more likely to score, and even if you don't score, you're gonna recover faster. Absolute game-changing strategy, dribble sideways, dribble on an angle. Strategy number two, cornering. Contrary to popular belief, your corner is actually one of the safest places to have the ball. Caveat, if done right. Okay, so we don't run into the corner, we stay back. The reason we actually want the opponents to take the ball into our corner, at least sometimes, obviously you don't want the ball in front of your net all the time, but the reason you should not be scared of your corner is because corners eat time. When the opponent takes the ball from the midfield into your corner, that actually is gonna give you time because once the opponent gets it into your corner, the odds that they're self-scoring it off your backboard at like plat two or diamond two isn't likely. They're gonna go for a pass. In which case, as long as you wait back and let them come to you, you'll have time to intercept them. The place that most low rank players go wrong is they panic. They try to stop the opponents from getting into their corner, which is like, great, if you want to take it into my corner instead of my net, net, fantastic. This will make a lot more sense when you understand rule number three, back post defense. Back post is one of the best places to be positioned on defense, especially if you're a lower ranked player. When you position at the back post, the post opposite ball side, a couple things happen. First off, because you're opposite the ball side, the entire play is in front of you. No matter if the opponent hits it off your backboard, no matter if they actually shoot it at your net, if you're back post, the play is always in front of you. Second reason is because back post gives you access to something very special, the backboard. Jokes aside, I don't think enough low rank players understand how important having access to the backboard is. Because what I see with most low rank players is something like this. You see these boost pads that run down the center of the field, this like straight line that goes from your net to the opponent's net, and then they drive down the center of their field. And where do you end up when you do this? Your car is facing at your goal, not at the opponent's. This is not ideal. We don't want to be in our own net. We want to be defending the net. Being back post gives you options to go backboard beforehand if need be. This is super important as you climb the ranks. And finally, maybe the most important reason is it allows you to cover for your teammate. Now, here's the caveat. Here's where I have to say, can you get away with pushing up to front post as you rank up, as you get to grand champ plus? Absolutely. But there's a big difference between diamond and 
Grand Champ Plus. If there's a play going on in your corner and it's at all slow, it's not free, is for you to park on your back post. Like literally just park your car there. I used to recommend people to do like donuts. I used to recommend people like try to preserve the momentum and stick back posts. But what I found coaching is that's too complicated. It introduces too many factors. So my recommendation to you, let's keep it simple. We rotate back posts. We sit there until the ball is clean, free, and safe. If our teammate is in the corner, we don't push up into the corner with them. You do this one thing alone, you will easily be in champ. Game sense rule number four, we're almost there. You need to understand the concept of time. Have you ever heard a pro player? I think one great example is Appjack. If you ever watch him play, they'll say something like this. They'll say, take time. You got time. Give me time, time, time. There. Oh shit. I got, I got to leave the yeah, game. Yep. Here's what time actually means so that you can implement it in your ranked 2v2 games. What is the primary goal in a ranked 2v2 game? I ask this to all my players when I coach them, and it sh it's shocking how many players don't understand this. The goal in ranked 2v2 is as follows. Get a 2v1 situation. And by the way, don't take this from me. Take this from Gamers8 champion, over 300,000 tournament winnings, pro player comp. He's the one who taught me this. The reason is because until we get a 2v1, unless you have cracked mechanics, which I'm assuming you don't, it's going to be very hard to score against two defenders. So what we're trying to do is minimize the situations we overcommit and set up situations by fake challenging, by forcing them into the corner, by getting the opponents to overcommit, by baiting them where we have a 2v1. When we get this 2v1, we want to do something called speeding up the play. What does that mean? Well, when we have this 2v1, we have a temporary situation where we have twice the players, twice the boost, and twice the pressure as the opponent that's stuck back. When they commit, we flip a switch. We speed up the play. We move the ball down the field as fast as possible to capitalize on the 2v1 before the overcommitted guy on the opponent team gets back. Odds are we're going to convert that 2v1 into a goal. Okay, now you understand the idea of timing and speeding up the play. Now you can finally understand what the pros mean when the pros say take time. What they really mean is slow down the play. Why would we ever want to slow down the player, control the ball? To understand, let's go to our same situation, but flip it. Instead, let's say we are the second man back and our teammate fails his air dribble and overcommits. Now we're stuck in a 1v2. When we're stuck in a 1v2, we want to buy time. We want to take time. We want to stall as much as possible for our teammate to come back. The reason for this is because remember, any 50-50 we take while we're last man back in this 1v2, unless we maintain possession and win it, it's going to result in the opponent swooping in and overwhelming us because they have two cars and we only have one last man back. You want to try to get control of the ball, win it off your opponents if you can, but most importantly, buy time. You see, if you simply evaluate every situation in Rocket League and question, is it a 2v2? Is it a 2v1? Or is it a 1v2? You're going to be making such better decisions in your ranked twos games. Understanding time and speeding up the play is going to be a game changer in your ranked twos games, but you have to be comfortable with cornering, with your shadow defense, and with your dribbling in order to make it work. Finally, game sense tip number five, timing on your rotations. If you've ever questioned how pros play so fast, guess what? It's not because their boost is faster than yours. The reason is because their positioning is better than yours. And more specifically, they time their rotations better. You see, most low rank players understand the idea of rotation, or at least in theory, right? You don't want to always be the one on the ball because sometimes you need to grab boost and reset and cover for your teammate. Level two on that is this idea of timing your rotation. So it's not just about being in the right spot. It's about when you arrive there. Let me give you an example. When the ball goes into your corner, we now know we want to rotate to our back post. The second thing you should be asking yourself on your rotation, how fast do I need to get there? Because if the ball is rolling really fast through your corner and you need to get back post quickly, your timing needs to be fast. Equally though, if the ball is going slow into your corner, you need to rotate to your back post slow. Wait, why are we rotating to our back post slowly? Luke, didn't you just tell me I need to get to my back post? Yes, we do want to be to our back post, but if we rotate fast while the play is moving slow, we're going to get to our back post too quickly. Then we have to kill our momentum. And this goes back to game sense rule number three. Remember that situation where we were sitting back post and we wanted to creep up because the ball was still in our corner and we were already back post? Why did that happen? Odds are it happened because you rotated too fast. And if I can give just one recommendation for you on timing your rotation, because I know part of it is just game sense, right? You have to be able to read how quick the play is going. It's take your time. Be patient. When I see low rank players pushing up back post, they'll rush there 
and then they're sitting in the middle of their net waiting. Super awkward, and then they creep up into the front post, and they get scored on. Same thing happens on offense. low rank player, you're waiting for a pass as second man on offense. You rotate there way too fast. Then the pass comes, and you're too far pushed up. You have to jump back, and the ball goes over your head. And by taking time, playing it slow, and keeping the play in front, you're going to have a much easier time hitting the ball that's in front of you than one that's behind you, where you have to back up, or use crazy mechanics, or take off fast, because as a low rank player, usually you're not going to have the mechanics for that. So those are my five game sense tips, dribbling on an angle, cornering back post defense, buying time and speeding up the play and slowing down on your rotation, keeping the play in front of you, timing it. Oh my gosh. If you have those five mechanics and five game sense ideas, you're going to crush below grand champ. You will crush. As always, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, it's code FAST. First five people who qualify and get coaching from this video get a bonus 30-minute one-on-one coaching session with me. I'll have my Discord first link in the description below. See you guys in the next video.